If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the dusty wheel. Hey, welcome back to The Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, tonight we have the second episode of Robert Jordan's Notes, but before we begin that, before I introduce my guests, I want to remind everybody about what's coming up. First of all, this Sunday we're going to do a live stream because you all signed up and subscribed. We hit 7,500 subscribers today. It was awesome. Thank you so much for your support. We're really humbled by that. Really appreciate it, and if this is the first time you're watching us, you're showing up the show, we'd really appreciate you liking the video and subscribing if this kind of Wheel of Time content is your thing. Now, just so you know, the following Watt Wednesday, we're gonna have our typical Amazon news and giveaway announcement extravaganza. It's just a fun time. There's gonna be one giveaway there I think you're all gonna really enjoy. No, it's not that thing that we talked about, that piece of news that you'd really like to hear, at least yet. But be back here, Watt Wednesday. We're gonna have fun talking all about what's coming up in August. And just a reminder, Thursday, tomorrow morning, our next episode of Barside Chats drops. It's a fun little discussion between my friend and I, all about the future when it comes to the Wheel of Time, when it comes to talents and abilities, and whether or not we'd even want those things. This is a lot, it's a lot of fun. It's like uh, 30 minutes, download it, let us know what you think, and we will, we'll run a poll afterward and see what you would do if you could pick out men's talents or a variety of other different, what I would call foretelling talents from the Wheel of Time. So that being said, those are all our announcements. Let's get started. Let me introduce my two wonderful friends and guests of the show. Welcome, Therese and Linda. How are you both doing? Oh, Hi. Thanks. <laughs> it's so awesome to see your faces again. We did this last time. Everyone loved. This is one of our most popular episodes last time. And I, I believe this will be too. After we were done, if you remember, we kind of asked fans, what do they want to see? What do they want to see? And a lot of fans brought up our topic tonight, which is a discussion about Taim, Dimondred, and Asmodian. See, I said all those right, I think, <laughs> for, all of you, yeah. for all of you worrying about <laughs> Wheel of Time pronunciation right now. I think those were right. Now, as a reminder for everyone that's watching, there are spoilers. That Obviously, we're going to possibly spoil the entire series for you. Okay, maybe not that, but... A lot of theories dealing with Taim, Demon Dread, and Asmodian do spoil some things. So if you really don't want to know anything about them, please don't continue watching because this entire episode is dedicated to them. And for those of you that have asked this question afterwards, I want to remind you uh, that the notes themselves that we're going to be discussing can be found at the Charleston, is it the College of Charleston, Addlestone Library Special Notes is it section? Uh, special, special collections. Notes. Special collections. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And uh, you can find the link to that in the description of the video. So if you're really curious about what you can find there, you can just scroll that page forever <laughs> and learn all about that. Now, if, and again, that's where we're kind of reading some of these notes from is just Therese went out and, uh, and, and did a lot of research and so did Linda into these notes and they were kind enough to share them with me. And so I, I get a little window in, and that's what brought about this discussion tonight, which is we've all been asked about Taim and Demondred and Asmodian because Robert Jordan mentions these theories or these characters in his notes, 
And we found some stuff over the years in those notes that is a little bit different than what we read in the books. So why don't we just kind of uh, go down this road just a bit uh, and, and cover why we're actually talking about this today. So I, I want to jump in with this question. Why did fans believe that Taim was demon dread? And this might be news for some of you out there <laughs> who might have come to the books later on, never even thought about this idea. Or for those of you that have been thinking about this for 30 years, you might be wondering, you might be saying, I know exactly why. So we're going to cover kind of some of the evidence in the books that led fans down this road. So Taylor, if you want to throw up the first quote here, this is a, one of the... I, this is actually has to do with one of the theories that was posted. I think this was in June of 1998 was posted to Theoryland and mentions all of these proofs. So let's, let's talk about these quotes. This first one is from Lord of Chaos, Chapter 2. And this is when uh, we have Mazram Taim being brought before Rand. The quote says, They halted a few paces before him at a gesture from Tumud, Tumad. Rand opened his mouth, but before he could speak, Luz Theron rose up in a frenzy in his head. Samael and Demondred hated me. Whatever honors I gave them, the more honors, the worse the hate, until they sold their souls and went over. Demondred especially. I should have killed him. I should have killed them all. Scorch the earth to kill them all. Scorch the earth. Face frozen, Rand fought for his own mind. I am Rand Althor. Rand Althor, I never knew Samuel or Demondred or any of them. The light burned me. I am Rand Althor. Light, a faint echo. One more thought came from elsewhere. The light burned me. It sounded like a plea. Then Luz Theron was gone, driven back into whatever shadows he lived in. So right after this one, we get a second quote, which kind of goes along with this. Bashir took advantage of the silence. You say you're Mazram Taim? He sounded doubtful, and Rand looked at him in confusion. Was this Taim or not? Only a madman would claim that name if it was not his. The prisoner's mouth quirked in what might have been the beginning of a smile, and he rubbed his chin. I shaved, Bashir. His voice held more than a hint of mockery. So <laughs> these two quotes are some of the kind of initial clues to maybe this was somebody that, we, that was not actually Mazram Taim. We'll cover three more, but I'm kind of curious for both of you, and maybe I'll start with you, Therese. Was this something that you believed? Did you believe that Taim was de- this Demondred? This was the very reason I found Theoryland in the first place, because this was my theory. I was so convinced that Taim was Demondred, so I went online and I started searching around to see if anybody else agreed with me, and that's how I found Theoryland. Nice. Yeah. So, I think, yes. <laughs> so yes, you were you were in the camp of definitely. Uh, what's funny is I saw my answer to the person that submitted the theory. This clearly wasn't a theory I cared much about in 1998. Asmodian. I was kind of stuck on Asmodian yeah. as Lanfear and Varen. So yeah. I remember replying to this person's theory, which had zero quotes. It just kind of mentioned things from the books. But I remember replying to it something to the effect of like, "This sounds really interesting. You might have the right answer here." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Linda, was this, was this your belief too when you read the books? It was, yes, yes. I um, came to that completely independently. I wasn't even online back then. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. I, I I'm kind of curious for those that, are, those that are watching in chat, are you just as con- were you just as convinced if you were reading the books well <laughs> before Robert Jordan maybe started giving answers about this? Were you convinced that Taim was demon red? Like, give me a thumbs up if yes, thumbs down if, if no, and then maybe, I guess, a non-thumbs up or thumbs down if uh, you didn't know. Uh, and, you let's know, go th- on Theoryland yeah. and Dragon Mountain and everything else over the years, it was one of the most common theories that got oh, posted yes. over and over and over again. Oh, you know? yeah. So. It, it, was, it was pretty contentious because you certainly had a crowd that was against it. But here are a couple some more quotes that kind of solidified this theory. So number three, let's look at that one. This is from Lord of Chaos, prologue compared to chapter two. So first we have Masana, and she says, the first part of the Great Lord's, oh, sorry, this is Demon Dread. He says, the first part of the Great Lord's message was simple. Let the Lord of Chaos rule, his words exact. The corners of his mouth twitched as close to a smile as Masana had ever seen from him. Then he told them the rest. And then you have this, this little portion from chapter two, and not just this one. There's many references to Taim doing this. He says, I submit to the dragon reborn. I will serve and obey. The corners of his mouth quivered again in that almost smile as he rose. Tumad gaped at him. This, this idea of almost smiling was something that was like pointed out. It's like the entire first part of Lord of Chaos seemed to be all about establishing the fact that Taim was demand, demand dread. Let's go, let's go to quote four, Taylor. So then you have chapter three shortly after, and you have Taim say, this lot was dredged from the bottom of... Taim began contemptuously, then stopped in the middle of the farmyard, staring at Rand. Chickens scratched in the dust around his feet. You haven't tested any of them? Why in the name of... You cannot, can you? You can travel, 
but you do not know how to test for the talent. So here's Masrum Taim using the word talent, I mean travel, with a capital T, something that fans immediately saw and were like, well, how would Masrum Taim even know what this is? And then there's this last quote that kind of puts the nail in the coffin for a lot of fans at the time. In chapter 11, it said, it's time you started raising an army of your own instead of depending on others. Bashir could change his mind. He will if Queen Tenobia tells him to. And who can know what these so-called Aiel will do? Like so-called Aiel, travel, the same smirk. They, they actually compare his nose at one point um, mm. very similarly uh, to Demondred. So yeah, I think this was like one of those kind of uh, just accepted theories like this was true. And I'm looking at chat and I'm seeing a ton of yes, yes, yeses and thumbs up. This is one of those like theories that didn't even feel like a theory. It was just like, this is fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 that's how I felt about it at least. Uh, once, once this person kind of submitted it, once like Therese and others came and started talking about it, it was like, oh yeah, this is obvious. Uh, so do you remember the first moment that fans began to doubt that this was true? Do, you ever, do either of you have a recollection like, that moment all of a sudden, like the first time you heard something that might've suggested it wasn't? Or is well, it something all, you read? This all happened before before I joined Theoryland because I joined Theoryland in 2004, late 2004. And by then it had already been debunked, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, Crossroads of Twilight came out before that. So yeah, I was late to that game. Well, that's the, that's the funny thing is we all felt like it was debunked. Linda, do you remember it being debunked? It was and... Winter's Heart, I think, was the beginning of the end for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, let's let's right. let's cover that. I and mean, that's there's that question out yeah. for you that are watching. You know, uh, I think this is important. When we began to doubt, began in Winter's Heart, and then Robert Jordan was also answering questions during interviews, and he's kind yeah. of seeded. Not, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say seeded the doubt. He just kiboshed it. Right? He just said no. Uh, so let's let's check out this one. This is the earliest record we have of a fan bringing this theory up to Robert Jordan. So give me number six, Taylor. Um, Edward uh, stated, I told him about the theory which someone posted that Taim is Demondred, who will eventually be discovered and killed with Loghain replacing him. He sounded interested at first, but then he laughed. I think about the part of Loghain replacing him as the teacher of the Ashraman. And of course, he said, read and find out. Now, this was in 1994, uh, right when, you know, after Lord of Chaos came out, uh, which I would say is probably his laugh and read and find out was probably still when this was true. <laughs> you know, he had a much different yeah. reaction as the time went on. Right. Uh, let's let's read this other quote. Uh, these next two. Uh, Taylor, give us uh, se number seven. So this is from Winter's Heart. This is that uh, this is one of the main pieces of information fans use to debunk this against those of us that were supporting it. Uh, you have a uh, kill him. The Mahil, uh, how do you pronounce that? Mahil had ordered oh, before yeah. sending them to Kyrian, but he had been dis as displeased that they were found out as they had failed. Farmatting was to be their last chance. He had made that as plain as polished brass. Kill him, Demondred had commanded later, but he had added that it would be better they died than let themselves be discovered again by anyone, even the Mahil, as if he did not know of Taim's order. And later still, Morden had said, kill him if you must, but above all, bring everything in his possession to me. That will redeem your previous transgressions. Uh, this is, uh, Therese, you made a, uh, an important point about bringing this quote, you know, uh, make sure we showed this quote to the fans. Why was this one so important to you? Because it depicts, uh Taim and Demon Dread as two different people. Mm. Pretty clearly, like, you know, obviously he has seen and talked to both of them. So, I mean, that could be a ruse, but then you have to ask yourself, why would Demon Dread bother to give the same command twice, you know? Yeah, um, that's the, I mean, not that I wouldn't be the kind of person that would argue that ruse. <laughs> if I didn't like the theory, <laughs> I would totally use that as like, well, he was just yeah. trying to trick him. Yeah, but and why, why would he sense. say to keep it secret from <laughs> Taim, you know? And, yeah, uh, that's... He's just covering his tracks, right? But then later yeah. in Winter's Heart, uh, there's another one, which is the fact that Demon Dread didn't recognize Damer Flynn at the cleansing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's let's do that one, Taylor. Let's let's show that quote. That's a good one to bring up uh, because one of our theory landers, Gonzo. Uh, this is seven number two, or yeah, the next seven one there, Taylor. You have Gonzo the Great from Theoryland asked Robert Jordan. He said, "Did Demon Dread recognize Flynn in the last chapter of Winter's Heart?" And Robert Jordan said, "Rafo." He said, "Would Ta would Taim have recognized Flynn in that position?" Robert Jordan said, "Yes." 
And then Gonzo asked, did you intend in Winter's Heart to make it clear that Demon Dread is not Taim? Of course, Robert Jordan said, Raffo. <laughs> because at this point, you can tell Robert Jordan hated answering this question. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't want from, it. Yeah. That was, yeah, sorry, that was from a convention in the Netherlands after Winter's Heart came out. There wasn't really much of a Winter's Heart tour. Like he went to Europe and did some stuff there. And so that was in the Netherlands. And it wasn't until the Crossroads of Twilight tour that he really started debunking it, saying, no, yeah, that's, that's not true. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's jump to those quotes. Uh, Taylor, give us uh, this eighth quote, because this is a good example of what uh, Therese is talking about. <laughs> Just straight up. Is Taim Demandred? No, that is totally bogus. <laughs> Which I, I love that that's like a really, he didn't even say Rafa or whatever. It's just like, no, and that's it's bogus. That's from another one of our Theory Landers. Uh, is that Ted? Ted that did that one? Yeah. yeah. We did. We did, as Theory Land, kind of obsess about getting this answer. Because, as you'll see in this next quote we have, quote nine, okay. this is from... Oh, sorry. No, this isn't the next... Oh, yeah, this is this one. Quote 10 is from a Theory Lander. But this is from the question of the week, part one. The okay. question was, at a recent book signing following the release of Crosswords of Twilight, it was reported that you confirmed that the forsaken Demon Red has never posed as the man known as Mazrum Taim, who was introduced to Rand at the beginning of Lord of Chaos. Have you confirmed that Demon Red has never posed as the man known as Mazrum Taim, leader of the Black Tower? <laughs> Robert Jordan replied, Yes. Dimandred has never posed as Mazrum Taim. All right, those of you who fell over from the shock of a simple, straightforward answer can get up off the floor now. Sometimes simple and straightforward can be the most devious of all, as any student Indeed it was. of, <laughs> of Ice and I will tell you. <laughs> Very disingenuous. That's, that's so great. That's uh, Linda, oh, yeah. how does that make you feel when you read something like that <laughs> from Jordan? Yeah, he really was disingenuous at times. <laughs> that's this so great. a big one. Yeah, that's, I loved that one. And there's his 10th quote. This one is from a theory lander, uh, Isabel. She, in 2005, wanted, wanted him to act, put another nail in this coffin that he thought was, you know, somehow was still popping up. <laughs> it, was, okay. it was still popping back from the dead. She said, was Tamandred a deliberate ruse to lead your readers astray, or were you surprised by all the theories connecting Taim to Demandred? Robert Jordan replied, I was surprised, but I wasn't going to disabuse you of it. For a while, I like to watch you squirm. <laughs> and that is accurate. Uh, I can't imagine just, if you just think about how he answered all those questions, uh, it's just funny yes. because he knew, he knew what we're about to talk about from the notes. So it's just, it's just great, Jordan. I, I loved that about him uh, very much. But I wanted to bring this up because uh, I was talking to you both about this. Uh, we talked about this today, which was Robert Jordan made a point to tell fans he never changed his ideas because of fan input. And uh, so this is, yeah, these, right. these, two, these two quotes are really great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. So let, let's cover these and then we get to jump in for those of you that are uh, here to kind of hear what the notes had to say about this. We'll jump into that one really shortly. So let's see this next quote. So uh, Dave Slusher from, uh, it's a, from a podcast back, wow, back in 1994, they had podcasts. Uh, mm. He said, do you find that people's interpretations of the books, do they match up with what you intend? Or do, you, or do people sometimes bring you to an interpretation that you hadn't thought of yourself? Robert Jordan said, there are things in the books I have tried to bury very deeply, and if from the discussion or the questions I can see that they're beginning to get close to something I want to keep buried, I know that I have, been, have to be more subtle from now on, that I haven't been subtle enough. Or on the other hand, there are some times when I realize that they're spending a lot of time discussing something that I was certainly not trying to make obscure, that I thought was perfectly obvious. Then it becomes plain to me that I've gone the opposite way. I didn't say enough about it for them to understand, so then I have to maybe iterate, reiterate a little bit. But I certainly, I don't change the plots or anything like that. I'm certainly not going to alter the fates of major characters or anything of that sort, whether someone has figured out what is going, what's, what that's going to be or not. I must say they have not figured out very much of that accurately, but it's fun to see. I don't know if that was the right date on that one. <laughs> I might have left that wrong date, but... Uh, yeah, that was, and then there's this quote, uh, number, number 12 here, which is just the same kind of thing. He said in 2005 on his blog, for Corin Ashman, I've never changed anything because of a post. I did think of doing so when I first discovered the online community. I'd see someone who had figured out where I was going with something and think that I should change it just to keep the surprise factor. But there was always somebody else, often a lot of somebodies, who would post explaining why the first post just had to be wrong. So I went ahead and did what I had planned to do. Now, when somebody figures out what's what, I just think that's somebody, that's somebody who's on the ball and go on with my writing. So I, I do have this question for you, uh, Linda. To this point, we know that he changed some things, but to the point that it was fan input involved, how do you feel about that? Like, 
the changes he made, do you think those were likely because he just wanted to make the change or do you think the fans did have something to do with it? In this case, I actually think that the fans did have something to do with it because you could see how much effort he'd put into in it being, uh, in Taim being de Demon Dread. And then to repurpose that and those things are left sitting there um, and they, they do um, conflict really with how a third age person would have reacted. So that one was a definite, I think, a definite change that um, he probably, uh, he did at that on the run. Do you feel the same way, Therese? Was this something that you felt like he changed because of the fans had kind of figured it out? He was too obvious and he just decided? Or do you think that there was something he just came up with later and he's like, you know what, I'm just going to move it because I haven't really revealed it yet? Yeah, um, I should I should bring up here instead of focusing on my own opinion that I had a conversation with Brandon about this on Reddit. Like when I first posted this stuff from the notes uh, about Taim and Dread, um, a, Brandon showed up on the post. Well, somebody posted on Reddit and Brandon showed up there and, you know, wrote a spiel about it. Uh, but he said that he feels like you know, Robert Jordan probably changed his mind because he didn't feel it was right for Demon Dread's character or mm. something like that. You know, he was he was pretty adamant that he didn't think fans had anything to do with it. I'm not so sure that I agree, uh, mm. but I don't know. I just felt like throwing Brandon's opinion out there. And I can post a yeah. link to that on Twitter later, you know, for those who are interested to see what he had to say about it, because it was quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, please do, and I'll, uh, I'll also include it in the description of this video. So those of you that are, end up over here and watching this, once you hear this, uh, we'll get that link in the description also. That's a, that's a great point. I, I'm not sure about this one. I kind of go back and forth on it. There is a quote we'll bring up later, which does make it obvious that mm -hmm. fans, fans' input has affected the, the writing at some points. Uh, but I, I think right now, uh, and hopefully those of you that are watching or enjoying this, uh, we're going to talk about the notes now. You've probably come to see what, what do the notes say, uh, I'm looking forward to talking about that. We'll open up the call lines here soon, and uh, we'll let you give us a call and ask a question if you have one. But uh, yeah, let's let's jump into this. Uh, this next quote is comes straight from the notes, and then Therese and Linda, you can speak to these as we cover them. So here's this first one. Uh, this is from Box 58, Folder 6, Page 15, under the heading of People. Uh, uh, this is B. Demon Dread hated, feared, despised Luz Theron. Like Lanfear, he plays for larger stakes than most of the others who are trying to stake out worldly kingdoms. He will show up claiming to be Mazrum Taim, taking advantage of Rand's amnesty. And the second one along this same kind of idea, this is also from Box 58, Folder 3, page 34. This is under Notes on Rand Althor. Taim Demon Dread showed up, not so much because his party wants Rand free, though that might be a point in their plans. On the other hand, Rand in the hands of the White Tower and thus within Masana's power could still cause one hell of a lot of chaos. But because of learning that the Shido were moving in, they could not be sure the Aes Sedai could drive off the Shido, nor that the Shido could, would not kill Rand. And a rescued Rand, pissed that the Aes Sedai will really be a source of chaos and disunity. So, Therese, do you remember first reading these notes? Like, do you remember when you first kind of read through and found this? Yeah, like, because uh, I went with uh, my roommate Marie to uh, Charleston to dig through the notes. And I thought that she found the first one. She thought that I found the first one. <laughs> but it was just like we were emailing each other like, oh, my God. Oh my God it's really real. <laughs> I mean, it was just crazy. Uh, by the way, that first quote that you gave is from before he wrote Lord of Chaos. And the second quote that you gave is from after he wrote Lord of Chaos. Um, you oh, can tell we talked okay. about this last last time about how you can tell, you know, because he's writing in past tense in the second quote, like this is what happened. And in the oh, right, first right. quote, he's yeah. talking about this is what will happen. So, <clears throat> yeah, so this, I, I imagine finding like something like this would be. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty stupendous. Uh, oh, it, it reminds me of a quote that I did find recently for another video that I had done about uh, about Sen Sen Bui. Um, uh, there were just a random quote about uh, the people from Tyr and using an analogy in his notes that he only uses once in the books, and that's right at the beginning of the Eye of the World. So, anyways, finding those things are just like really <laughs> momentous as a fan because you're like, 
oh that makes a lot of sense uh, and yeah it, and at that point yeah. at that point the companion hadn't come out yet so we had decided that we were going to keep anything along these lines plot stuff uh a yeah. secret until the companion came out so i had to keep this a secret for more than a year oh really uh, <laughs> yeah yeah which is kind of crazy but um I mean, I did. I did tell a few people that I were, was pretty sure weren't going to blurt it out on the internet. Um, but yeah, I kept a secret for more than a year. Yeah, yeah Taim being demon red. Well, it just. I mean, if you think about how much we argued about this yeah. for years, and at least you know it's that confirmation. Not that Jordan, as the author, can't. Um, you know, he can. Mm-hmm. He can change his mind. And right, he yeah. he he painted himself into a bit of a corner. But then he he's the author, and he just. I don't know if you call it a retcon, but he certainly, like you said, Linda, he definitely painted the picture that this was Demon Dread. Um, do you remember when you first found out about this and what were your thoughts when you did, Linda? Yeah, I mean, I first found out about it because of the notes. I, I went with Therese because Therese went twice. I went with her the second time, but this time I, I had been unable to go because I'd just changed jobs or else I would have been going with them. Uh, but they kindly let me know what they'd read. And yeah, I just thought that... It made total sense because um, the uh, the thing that um, isn't touched on, and in fact, he, he he is the fact that the male channelers ought to slow also. So, mm. and Taim should have looked younger than he actually did. And I actually yeah, right. asked that question of, for Robert Jordan, and he picked it up on his blog, and he answered me with some stuff about, oh, it's just that Taim has had. Um, had a rough trip over to the farm and he, <laughs> come on, I'm rolling my eyes. It wasn't it, very good. <laughs> had a rough trip over to the farm. That's yeah, really good and that's why, you know, to Camelin, and that's why he looked the worst for wear and that's why he didn't look as young as he ought to have looked. I mean, yeah, this this one gets this one uh, makes me laugh because what it's also tied to, and we'll get to that shortly, uh, this is also tied to a favorite theory of, of mine, uh, topic of mine. And I did want to ask you both, but before I do, I want to let everybody know that the call lines are open. If you want to give us a call now that you've seen the notes regarding uh, Taim and Dimandred that talk about them as the same individual, you want to give us a call. It's 1313-825-5968. This is a live call and talk show. We do have a lot of fun when you do call. So feel free to give us, uh, you know, call in and, and ask us a question about uh, anything having to do with Taim, Dimandred, and Asmodian. If there happens to be a topic you want to bring up separate from that, uh, you can, but we'd really like to stay focused so people that watch this later, they really get all the answers that they that they needed or wanted from this. So uh, I guess the question I have for you, Linda, is do you feel like Jordan, ever since he made the change, just, in, just enjoyed messing with the fans? Is that what you felt like it was? Or for him, do you think this was, I changed my mind and therefore it never really was that case? He's never been him because I never revealed him to be him. Um, that, he may have put that ex- explanation to himself, but he did also enjoy messing with people on this. He did a lot of teasing of Isabel, for instance, uh, over <laughs> yeah. her theories. I mean, like, yeah, he's had a long track record of playing with fans over their theories. Uh, the Killer of Asmodian was a, a huge one for a long while that he used to mess with people on. Yeah, he did. I remember asking, uh, I, I didn't ask the question. I think we submitted it from Theoryland to DragonCon. And it was one of these, uh, instead of telling us who killed him, it was like, tell us who didn't kill him. And here's a list. And he got a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he had a fun. And he actually yeah. picked Pat and Fane was not one of the killers, according to Robert Jordan. So <laughs> that was really so, good. Are yeah, we go going to talk please. about the Asmodian aspect of this? Yeah, I wanted to. So the first thing I want to do before, right before we do that is I want to bring up this 15th quote because we did mention that we don't know if for sure fans somehow affected this change from Taim to be not Demon Dread. But this is something from the notes that does come up and maybe both of you can speak to anything else that you know from the notes where changes did occur because of fan input. So Taylor, let's see this quote, uh, number 15. This is also box 58, folder three, page 62, under notes on Rand Althor. Matt stood naked and bound, snarling. An odd spear with a black shaft had been thrust across his back behind his elbows, and a silver medallion, a fox head, hung on his chest. Per Perrin. And underlined and bolded, consensus seems to be that this has been fulfilled with the Roydian Terangrial incident. And then also underlined and bolded, may drop the original meaning for space and time. Now, uh, consensus, I guess maybe that's kind of left hanging out there. 
But Therese, do you see this as kind of like he was aware of the pulse of fandom and he was just like, okay, I don't need to do anything else here because I've been watching and, and listening in? Or could this be consensus of from Maria and, and Alan, <laughs> consensus from well, his, his, his assistants? I think Maria said that it was around uh, the Path of Daggers when she got access to the notes. Or maybe that was when... I think it was around the Path of Daggers. I don't remember. Um, but... Anyway, uh, I'm not so sure that he actually decided against it. Uh, he was just writing a note, you know, to remind himself that he didn't necessarily have to go with his original meeting, yeah. um, you know, if he needed to save space and time. But Linda and I were talking yesterday, mm. and both of us think that it might be a reference to Thailand. Mm. Uh, so maybe it did happen yeah. anyway, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because he doesn't just, he didn't, he didn't go back necessarily and change this. It was just a thought he had at the moment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there anything else you remember from the notes where it did seem obvious where he speaks about how something he read with fandom or feedback he received from fans and he did make a change? Nothing I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. I just pulled that quote up because I came across it when I was looking through the RAM file for the Time and Dread stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. And one, I saw you know. that in there. And yeah, I mean, it at least shows that he's he is thinking about what fans believe, you know, and that does influence his writing. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and and I, if you go back to his quotes uh, at the beginning, he talked about changing any major plots and things like that, um, that he, he hasn't made those because of fans. And I think that still holds up from everything we've covered that we don't know for sure if fans forced him into making, you know, pushed him that way or if he just kind of chose it. So. I think that's 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 a reasonable. One. We'll pull people into chat here, but I do want to bring up this idea of, um, or I want to answer this question before we do. When do we believe that Taim and Demon Dread was changed? Do we did, do either of you have kind of a theory on from what you've read in the notes when that actually was changed? Mm-hmm. Obviously, before Winter's Heart. Mm. Um, Yeah, I tend to think it was between the Path of Daggers and Winter's Heart because as of the Path of Daggers, he was still supposed to be keeping an eye on Rand, but Linda thinks it was before Path of Daggers and she can tell you why. Yeah, go ahead, Linda. Yeah, well, yeah, I do think that it was um, before Path of, you know, just after Path of, um, just after a a Crown of Swords. Crown of Swords. Swords. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just sort of looking at the characterization and the, you know, that whole confusion. Um, there was the attack on Rand um, in A Crown of Swords. And yeah, I just think that it was um, that by a path of daggers, they that he had started to switch. I mean, do either of you wonder, I mean, uh, have you ever thought of like, why would he do this? And I, I think, Therese, you mentioned something earlier, like you just... Uh, or that Brandon thinks maybe just decided that Demon Dread should have a different character arc. Do either of you have theories on why Jordan would have not just kept gone down this road? Not really. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, there's nothing that sticks out, you know, so it would just be random speculation, you know? That's what we're yeah. good at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for those of you, I'm kind of curious for those that are in chat, uh, if you, yeah, I'm kind of curious what your ideas would be along this line of like, what, what do you think was the purpose of this change uh, that looks to have been made? Uh, I like Brandon's idea that he just decided to give him a different character arc and didn't feel, I mean, how I would interpret this, didn't feel painted in to that corner because he hadn't revealed him yet. So he decided to go a different way with him, which I like. So let's, let's bring in our first caller. We will get to Asmodian. That's coming up here, but let's bring in our first caller to the show. It's, um, it's Adrian. Let's bring him in. Adrian, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Good. How y'all doing tonight? Fantastic. Great. So what's your, what's your question for us? Um, so for all of you on the screen, i um, just wondering since the show is going to have to combine characters, um, what your thoughts are on if they'll potentially combine uh, Taim and Demon Dread uh, for the show. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I have an idea here, but I don't want to capitalize on this. Uh, uh, Linda, do you have a, I mean, I'm sure you've thought about this. Uh, would you like to see them kind of make this merge, if you will, and and just kind of leave Taim as Demon Dread or, or just follow the books and how they're written? Well, if they do that, then how can um, Demon Dread get his channeler army together in Shara? 
I right. Mean, yeah, I, yeah, I think you, you, you really are emphasizing one arc or the other. You can't really have both at the same time. Yeah, you probably. I don't know. I think they could do both, you know, because you wouldn't necessarily have to spend a whole lot of time uh, in Shara to do that. Well, it really depends on what he did there. It, we, it's left up to our imagination, really. Yeah, that's and and, and because we didn't see much on screen at all. Um, I guess mm -hmm. with the Sharans, I I, I feel yeah. like that's one that one you can. You, I feel like the writers can play with that one more. In other words, they could have Taim, who is Demon Dread, actually make some trips out there and have influence out there in some form or fashion that doesn't necessarily follow what Brandon wrote and and still have both those. I still think it's possible. I, I'm kind of curious if they will do it. Adrian, what's your thought here? Would you like to see them uh, combine the characters and make this change? I mean, I don't want them to cut anything. Um, and I think that if they... If they were looking to cut cut things, I think Shara would be an easy thing to cut. Um, I don't want them to do it, um, but yeah, I, I I do think that it's a possibility. Yeah, it's a it is it's a question for them. Hopefully, I'll be honest. Hopefully, we get there. <laughs> that's that's where I am yeah. right now. Is like I just hope the show <laughs> makes it that far. Uh, and if it does, that'll be a question for them then. Uh, but yeah, it's something I think on fans' mind, especially with a discussion like this. You know, uh, do you because it doesn't really take away from anything because Taim in the end is basically becomes uh, forsaken or chosen. And yeah. uh, it, it, to me, it wouldn't necessarily remove or or take anything out of the plot to to have them as one. So, well, Adrian, hey, thank you so much for calling. Appreciate the question and uh, have a good evening. OK. Yes, you as well. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Yeah, that one's uh, that one's adventurous. I'm uh, for those of you that are watching in chat. If you're here off on uh, Twitter, Facebook, we won't see your answers. If you jump over here and jump into chat, we will. I'm curious. Thumbs up if you would like to see them merge Taim and Demondred as the notes at one point in the past suggested that they were as a single character. Thumbs down if you want them to just basically leave it the same that Mazrum Taim becomes a new chosen for a new age, if you will. Uh, before we bring our next caller, I do want to bring this up. Uh, both of you have. Uh, We've talked about this, Asmodian. What does this have to do with Asmodian? So this is one of my favorite theories. Uh, those of you that have ever known anything about me or Theoryland will know that I've taken probably every position on this theory that can be taken. <laughs> Except <laughs> for Grendel. That was oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much for bringing yeah. that up. Except yeah. for the lamest answer, <laughs> which, is, which is Grendel. I agree. I never took that. I'm really uh, disappointed in that. And again, hopefully all of you that are watching know that this is a spoiler episode. So if something is, spo is going to be about spoiled for you here, then too bad. Because I think Grendel was like the worst possible conclusion. Unfortunately, the books, uh, <laughs> the books take us there. Now, I think this was definitely one of those times when RJ just decided to go with a fandom consensus. You think this was it? This is the moment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was his fandom consensus moment for sure. Do you think that's because he just didn't really care? I mean, because, it was, because yeah. he changed it, right? Yeah. You know? so, so let's move on with that. Let's tell people how he changed it. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. So let's show people how. Okay, so um, let's, well, I'm going to read this one first. Uh, quote 16. I want to give you some context to why people thought that Taim was not the killer because we all thought Taim was Demon Dread and then why that was kind of canceled as an option. So Taylor, show us that quote 16. This is from the prologue. Uh, this is not the entire quote. If you wanna go read it from the books, you can. We cut it down for space, but you have the dark one saying, the chosen dwindle, Demon Dread, the weak fall away, who betrays me shall die the final death. Asmodian, twisted by his weakness. Then he says a lot of other stuff. Demon Dread uh, gets a little bit worried. He says, Demon Dread hesitated. A bead of sweat slid half an inch on his cheek. It seemed to take an hour. Another point pricked him. The great lord already knew how Ravine had died and seemed to know more of Asmodian than he. A lot of fans took this to mean that Demondred didn't know who killed Asmodian. So it certainly wasn't Taim, who everyone thought was Demondred. <laughs> so it was like this really convoluted kind of, especially once Jordan pushed people away from the idea that Taim and Demondred were the same people, then maybe Majram Taim could still have killed him because he wasn't Demon Dread. And we all went back and forth on this ad nauseum for a couple of decades. Uh, so Taylor, let's, uh, let's show what was found. And you'll have to talk about this, Therese, like what, <laughs> when this moment, when you found this one. This is my favorite that you found, by the way. <laughs> let's show this quote. This is in box 58, folder seven, page 19, Nynaeve Almira, biographical notes undated. 
It says she does not know that Agenor, or Osangar, and Balfamel, or Arangar, were resurrected, the latter as a woman who is now masquerading as Halima, Delana's secret companion. She knows that Mogedian was prisoner, of course, until she is or was informed by Egwene, Swan, or Leanna. She thinks Mogedian is still a prisoner. She does not know that Asmodian was a prisoner of Rand, nor, of course, that he was killed by Demundred. <laughs> so, so uh, I mean, he just yes. threw it out there. And he just like, threw it out there. It's right there. Oh, really? yes. <laughs> All this time, it was right there. And I, I'm trying to remember when I first heard this. I think when I first heard this information, I was ecstatic because I no longer had to accept that Grendel was the killer. <laughs> um, and yeah. uh, yes, and, and people are pointing out in chat, like, but it was intuitively obvious, Matt. I agree. It, it was intuitively obvious. Uh, I'll be honest with Robert Jordan. It was intuitively obvious that Taim was demon dread and he killed his Modian. <laughs> right. That's yeah. that's basically what we're saying here. Um, do you remember when you found this one? This this answer, Therese? It was it was within those first few days. Um, yeah. You know, well, like after we left the library, we spent a week like in Wisconsin or something. I don't remember. And I just spent like the whole time in our apartment that we had rented there looking through the notes. Mm-hmm. And that's when I found it. <laughs> yeah, that was... I know I found that one. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, yeah. that one. That one's always going to get me. I, I love that one so much. To, my, to the day I die, I'll be talking about that. He definitely <laughs> had the best motive, you know, because if yeah, Demon fine. Dread is Taim and he's moving in to take over the Black Tower, or to build the Black Tower, rather, uh, obviously he needs Asmodian out of the way. So he, you know, that was the clearest motive possible. Yeah, it, that was, it all made sense. And it was almost like it was too obvious for him in the end. And then yeah. what you said, when he when he took Demondred out of the equation, then he was no longer the killer. And I feel like you like you said, then he just picked Grendel. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's, that's well, the lame part. <laughs> the fans, like even before then, the fans thought that Demondred had ruled himself out as the killer in the prologue quote that you gave earlier. Right. But it's possible that... Uh, Demon Dread just didn't understand what the Dark One meant by uh, twisted by his weakness. Right. Mm. And that's what caused him to say, you know, the Dark One knew more about Asmodian than he did because there was something there that he didn't understand, you know? And I think the twisted by his weakness thing was probably a reference to the shield that Lampier had put on Asmodian. Mm. So Demon Dread didn't know about that, so... That yeah, was... that he, he would have died the final death. And I think that's probably what he what was surprised by, that the Dark One was just like, yeah, like the people have betrayed me if I die the final death. And he's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Because that file, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that file that we just read, that was pre-Lord of Chaos or was that post-Lord of Chaos where this answer about Demon Dread killing Asmodian? Do you recall? I don't remember. I'll have to look at it again. But it, I think okay. it's, I want to say it's like... Uh, probably part of his lord of chaos notes like his okay. working notes when he was yeah. writing that book but i'm not 100 percent sure let me look at it again later okay okay so yeah if you if you don't mind uh, checking that i'm just kind of curious i mean not as long as it didn't happen before lord of chaos because i guess people could say that like that was an initial plan but when he finally wrote lord of chaos he had decided but that doesn't make any sense because when he finally wrote lord of chaos demon dread was still time so mm. i think it's possible to argue that um, because even if I were to find something else from that same file that suggested it was written after Lord of Chaos, that doesn't necessarily mean anything yeah. because he could mm. carry over the same file and he would change some things in it, but he wouldn't yeah. like go through the whole file and make sure it was all, yeah. you know, everything was changed. Yeah, so for those of you that, it's impossible to say for sure. Those of you that are watching and kind of curious about these files, there are often five or six files that are the same file and you can just tell something was added each time, like a paragraph. Uh, sometimes just a couple words were changed or sometimes entire, you know, it, it, actually entire, uh, I've seen cultural shifts where he's made in the notes where it's like, it's this versus no, I'm going to go this way with it. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Let's bring in, we have a bunch of people waiting. Let's bring in our next caller. It's uh, James to the to the show. James, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How you doing? Hello. How are you guys? Fantastic. Thanks for, thanks for waiting online. So uh, what's your question for us? Well, first, I just wanted to say uh, I, I tune into most episodes, but I wanted to thank you guys especially for doing this series. It's my favorite series that you're doing. I think for a lot of us older fans, it feels like new content to some degree. So that's that's really cool of you guys to do this. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, my question is, 
is uh, your previous caller kind of had mentioned combining uh, Tame and, and Demon Dread for narrative economy and like what old fans would think. I'm coming at it from the other end. There's going to be a batch of new fans. Do you think it would be? Do you think they would delight in theorizing about Tame and Dread and all those breadcrumbs, or do you think they should be cut because it would just be frustrating for new fans? Oh, interesting question. Assuming so, we keep all the, assuming we keep all the other stuff the same. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, um, uh, Linda. What do you think with that? You know, considering Robert Jordan did end up changing his mind, would you leave them? Uh, would you leave those kind of characterizations of of Taim in there that were really kind of calling out to Demon Dread? Some I might, and some not. I mean, they will want cliffhangers, and they will want suspense whether they use Robert Jordan's or whether they um, invent their own is entirely up, up to them. But um, some of the things that I think they'll change, I think um, probably the, tr the travel, they might. And, and the yeah. so-called Aiel. So-called yeah. Aiel, yeah. I mean, yeah. one or both of those will go. Yeah, I, it, well, it's, but again, uh, it's there and it's fun to play with. Robert Jordan often lets stuff like that die. I mean, they... You can think about ways. I think one of the one, one of the theories that came up a lot, if uh, and James, you probably know this. One of the theories that came up was that Taim was like Demon Dread's like uh, protege, and so he would have yeah. heard these things, and he would have been taught these things, and that's why that, that was a common theory when we stopped believing that Taim was Demon Dread. It was like, well, then none of this makes any sense unless. Um, yeah. So, I could, but I can see them dropping some of those. Hmm. Uh, what do you think, uh, James? Would you like to see them kind of completely change it or just leave these in for the fans, new fans to kind of run into and, and theorize about? To me, I guess the question is how frustrating did we find it when the answer turned out to be something that wasn't what we thought? I, I feel like new fans would go through the same thing, uh, but I think it's fun to leave it in. I might cut the so-called ale, so ale thing because I think even if he was his protege, like that doesn't change your speech patterns or like, kind of your epistemic like way of thinking about the world you wouldn't like suddenly talk like you're living in elizabethan england just because you <laughs> learned from someone you know what i mean I know. sometimes so, i hear an accent and i want to use it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah that's my thoughts on it well yeah no, i know i appreciate it. that's a great question james uh, i appreciate you waiting online there and uh and yes, we love this just as much as you do, going back and kind of rehashing these and, and talking through it. And we'll keep on doing these episodes, but those are curious. We actually have the next two kind of teed up a little bit. Uh, episode four is cool. actually going to be very much focused on fan answering fan questions. So we've been putting together a list, and that will be a lot of fun to do. So, hey, James, thank you. Have a good night. All right, well, okay? thank, thank you. Bye. Yep, bye-bye. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is fun for, I mean, again, I... When he said, uh, you know, consider the frustration, I laughed to myself that I've never been frustrated about this theory, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I did get a question, uh, Zan Zanguini, who we know uh, asked, you know, what do we think the best, um, the best uh, theory or craziest good theory of who killed Asmodian? Which I answered in chat to be Avienda. I still think that's the craziest good theory. <laughs> that, was, that was my theory, you know, that, and I, I, I never actually believed it, but I still thought it was such a good theory that it was worth arguing. It was more interesting than Grendel. You yeah, know? it's yeah, exactly. It was a more interesting theory. I, <laughs> I loved that when you proposed that. I was like, I am an adherent to this theory. I love it. Yeah. I'm kind of curious for those that are in chat right now. What is your favorite Who Killed Asmodian theory, regardless if it's right or wrong? I'm just kind of curious to see it. Uh, Let's uh, let's bring another caller in. We have Lancer on the line. Norm, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Ladies, it is good to see you. And of course, <laughs> Sam, a.k.a. Innkeeper, raise my glass to you, sir. Um, I have, okay, this has been bugging me for a good minute, and I'm hoping maybe the, the notes can shed light on this. Um, okay, Rand was supposed to fulfill all these prophecies. He's the dragon reborn in the Westlands. He's the core more to the sea folk. He's the Kara Khan slash, uh, he who comes with the dawn with the Aiel was the Shara, uh, prophecy, uh, the Shara, uh, person that they had that the Mandred took. Was that corrupted by the Mandred and was supposed to be Rand? And Rand was supposed to fulfill that those prophecies, so that the Shara fought for the light instead of what ended up happening in the books. I'm trying not to spoil as much as possible. <laughs> so did the did the Mandred 
corrupt those prophecies that were supposed to be for Rand with the Shara. That's something that I was wondering if that was in the notes or something, because that's been bugging me for the longest ever since, you know, you see the latter books. So I will sit back and listen to you guys and I will say so long and peace out to the chat people. So take care you guys. Good night, Norm. Okay. Um, I love Norm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to that question, yeah, anything, any background you can give on that? There wasn't really any mention of um, prophecy, Shara and prophecies in the notes. Shara mm, didn't was, have much in the notes all. on it at all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as far as we can tell from the notes, the, the whole Shara plotline might as well have been Brandon's invention. Mm. And to an extent, we know that's true because he told us that uh, the River Souls all of that was the stuff that he just had to come up with, you know, uh, the backstory yeah. and everything. So, I mean, uh, the Shara plot line might have been 100% Brandon as far as we know. It does. I mean, it mirrors the idea that each one of these nations or populaces have some type of, um, you know, some type of idea around a savior mm -hmm. figure that's coming at the end of the Third Age, you know. So it, it makes sense. And I see probably why he went down that road. And, mm. and yeah. you know... I, but yeah, I kind of—it does make you wonder. Robert Jordan made the change to take time and not make him demon dread, but we never get clarification from Jordan that his intention was to make him into this person that went to Shara either. So my curiosity is, what was demon dread's plan? What did Jordan have in store for him if not with Taim? You know. Okay. Um, well, we know we know that demon dread used balefire off screen. Sure. Uh, and you know nobody in the sean chan chased after some mystery guy who channeled enormous amounts of the power so that they all felt the bale scream and so on so you know kind of narrow you know where was he he wasn't on the mainland no ashaman said anything so you know and that was robert jordan so we did know that he was somewhere, somewhere where nobody did anything about his channeling, it seems. I wish he took him, I wish they'd take him to the Isle of Madman uh, or something. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's right. Um, but uh, also too, those Sharon prophecies, because I did write an article on, on exactly that. Um, those, they were fulfilled the way they were meant to be fulfilled, that Demandred was going to be this Demon Dread was going to be this um, false dragon, if you like. Yeah, the by the way. dragon killer. Yeah. If, is that but a, the dragon that Demon Dread killed was actually that, um, that the, um, the Jumara. Do you, do you have that article? And maybe that's something you can share um, after this? Because uh, I think well, a lot of people I can be... link to it on. No, it's on the blog. Yeah, I'm going to throw that blog. also into the description. So, yeah. yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah. all those of you I'll that are watching, link. hopefully those of you are watching because I didn't tell everybody because I was just assume everyone knows who Linda is. She <laughs> runs 13th Depository and, yeah. and and everyone quotes that thing because she does a ridiculous amount of research on the foundation of all of these myths and such that Robert Jordan came up with. So hopefully you're a fan of 13th Depository. If not, go look it up. It's amazing. Um, we have two more callers. Let's bring in Andrew to the show. Andrew, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Oh, good day, everyone from Tokyo. Oh, from uh, Tokyo. Wow. <laughs> it's great. Um, I have a question on time management. Uh, I personally thought that maybe time was under compulsion, maybe under Demandra's control. Uh, that might explain how time might have known things that he shouldn't have. Uh, admittedly, uh, you know, maybe some of the physical connections or maybe Luz would have to be able to sense compulsion, which is what set off all those alarms in Rand's head. But I was wondering if there's anything in the notes alluding to that possibility. Yeah, is there anything else in the notes? You're both shaking your heads. Anything else about Demon Red that we ever learn in the notes? Nothing particularly interesting that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh. And and Taim either. There's just uh, I'm trying to remember if I ever saw I, much about. I've Taim read or... up on uh, the De Demon Dread notes, you know, before we did this show, and the only thing that was even mildly interesting in the notes on him was that uh, Robert Jordan felt it important to remind himself in those notes that 
Demondrad had spied on Elaine in the world of dreams mm. yeah. and that he misinterpreted her anger at Rand. Mm. Uh, so that was in his notes on, on Demon Dread and mm. um, that that was it. That's the most interesting thing. Mm. Yeah, By I the way, ever seeing... yeah, go ahead. before I forget, I just got an email from Marie and I always get this backwards. She reminded me that it was her that discovered the Asmodian bit, and it was me that discovered the the first time and joy bit. I just had to make that. <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. to make that I, correction real quick. We can move on now. Sorry. No, I love it. I, I, I don't remember ever seeing much of a file about Taim as far as his motivations and what he was going to do. That doesn't mean Robert Jordan didn't write something like that. It just wasn't in the notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that is what kind of a bummer. Like. I'm sure there are notes that we don't have access to and or just notes that just didn't get saved or whatever. Um, and at the end of the day, I'd be really surprised if there wasn't some file somewhere on Mazrum Taim that just, it seems like it seems missing. <laughs> I want that file. Um, hey, Andrew, what, what's your answer to this question that you maybe heard earlier? Would you like to see it during the TV, for the TV show, would you like to see the, this role actually merged back into kind of what it seemed like it was originally in the notes? Or would you like them to keep it separate just as they did in the books? Um, I, I would like to see it, uh, early something a little closer because I, I did feel like, uh, uh, Dumondre, uh, it just seemed like he was doing something, but with nothing to show for it. Um, and it kind of, uh, having it tied to time to kind of see progress by the Forsaken in a much kind of more immediate, uh, uh, way. So that's my thought. Yeah. 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 No, that makes sense. I, I'm hoping that they, uh, when, when they get there, that they, they do kind of play with this idea a bit. Um, I kind of wonder which way they'll go. I mean, this isn't something we get to decide, but it's fun to speculate, as always, at least for me. So, uh, Andrew, thank you very much for waiting online uh, from Tokyo. Really appreciate it. And uh, have a good, I don't know, if it's a good day right now I, in Tokyo? Yeah. yeah. Have, have a good day, okay? Good day. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's, a, that's the first time we've gotten a call from Tokyo. That's fantastic. Uh, there's a there's a question in um, in chat here from Miss Sarah James. On the notes, are there reserved notes that only Team Jordan has? Is there any knowledge or speculation about what's in them? So, uh, what's the answer to that, both of you? I thought there were some notes that were inaccessible. Yeah, there were some notes that were specifically for whoever was going to write the last book, or maybe uh, Jordan's working notes while he was working on the book. Um, that we didn't see anything like that in the library. So presumably they're restricted or were just never put in the library. Yeah. Um, and that's the, the, I thought there was some notion that we would eventually have access to those, but maybe not, no one told us for sure when or where, but I thought eventually we would have Yeah, access. Brandon mentioned something about that, but I don't remember exactly what he said. And he was kind of speaking, uh, you know, I mean, he's not the one who's going to decide, so I'm not right. sure whatever yeah. he said is even right. So sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so the last the books, the notes for the last three books, they held over. So yeah, and that's and that's going to be the interesting thing is actually getting access someday to those. By the way, we 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 have four more callers. We took down the call line. We'll take these last four calls. We have uh, just coming up here: Vance, Mike, Trevor, and Felix. We have these four calls, and then we'll get kind of take final notes uh, from the both of you, and then yep. we will uh, we'll we'll see the end of this one. Let's uh, bring Vance into the call. Hey, Vance, welcome to the Dusty hey. Wheel. How are you doing tonight? Hey, how's it going, Matt? I'm doing pretty good. Fantastic. So, uh, what are your comments? Is it who's it related to, and what do you want to know? Right. Uh, so, a uh, little background. I was a late reader to the Wheel of Time. I started in 05. So when I got to Lord of Chaos and Demander showed up for the first time in the book, I was like, oh, he definitely killed Asmodian. I had to be because it's <laughs> like the first time we saw him, you know, he hasn't been doing much. Um, and then when all of these theories, like as I got further into the series were debunked, I just felt super deflated. So maybe it wasn't as, uh, as big as all of you have been reading these books for a long time was. But even for a newer fan like me um, – I felt that deflation of like, oh, I thought I had that figured out. So uh, it was a, it was, it was a hit to say the least. <laughs> I'm going to say this, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I am so excited that new readers still feel the same way. <laughs> you know that you that you think this is the case, and you're going on, and you have this theory in your minds, and in the end, you find out like we did. 
And hopefully, though, you right. didn't have to wait as long to find out that it was kind of true. Uh, when did you finish reading the books? Uh, when was you, uh, when were you done the first yeah. time? Yeah, so I finished uh, finally finished Memory of Life in 2019. I took a couple of years off from reading uh, Wheel of Time there. I was just like, ah, I'll finish it one day. And that turned into, like, years. <laughs> so, But I'm well, it done wasn't... now, and I'm happy to be speculating about the show with everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm glad you didn't have to wait too long to hear this uh, notes uh, discussion we're having about it. So know that you were just on, you, you were on there just with us, which was, we all sensed it, and it was there, so at least we can get, at least right. we have that confirmation. Um, hey, uh, I appreciate you waiting exactly. online for us, and appreciate the comment, and have a good evening, okay? Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. So let's, uh, let's bring Mike right in here. Um, Mike, welcome Hi. to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Good. Greetings from upstate New York. Greetings. Greetings. That's fantastic. So uh, what's, your, what's your question for us? Okay, well, I'd always assumed that Jordan's original theory, or Jordan's original, original plan, rather, was to have time turn out to have been demanded the whole time. And some of the quotes uh, I'm seeing tonight that you put up, especially your quote number two, uh, make it sound like there was an original Mazram time that Demon Dread would have killed or replaced somehow. And I'd like to know uh, whether any of you, what you believed at the time when mm. that was a theory. Yeah, this is a great question. I, I, love, this theory, I love this question. Uh, and Therese, I'll throw this one to you, which is, yeah, do you, th do you think it was they, they killed him? You know, while while this idea that Demon Dread was going to be mad, I do think be... I do think he was trying to uh, say that Taim was a real person that right. uh, Demon Dread killed and then uh, used uh, the mask mirrors to impersonate because um, yeah. their features were presumably similar enough in the first place that it would have been easy to imitate him. Yeah, that's what I was, I was yeah, curious. So you don't think he kept him as something a... that never occurred to me. Well, you don't think he kept yeah. him as a prisoner, kind of like we've seen some Forsaken do. You think he probably just, in Jordan's mind, uh, that we're speculating he well, probably just killed him. One and thing made to consider mirrors. is that the timing is kind of off for uh, Demon Dread to be the one who was ravaging Saldia, uh, you know, because that started in the Eye of the World, didn't it? Um, yes. And it was probably just a little bit before the Forsaken escaped. So, yeah kind of rough there but there was a lot of debate about that over the years you know whether uh he had been taim all along or whether he killed taim and took over yeah i think i would i think i would probably believe that he at least had him as prisoner and he was using him but probably killed him i mean okay well i'm kind of a late starter to why i didn't begin the series until christmas of 2008 so i would have missed a lot oh. of this theorizing at the time yeah, no, I think that's. I think it's probably right from the facts in the books that it's likely that he definitely was a real person, and we don't know exactly what Robert Jordan's plans were as far as did he do away with him, did he just capture him and, and imprison him? But they definitely were two different people, uh, which they ended up being anyway. Uh, but they definitely were two different people originally too. I I gotta admit, I never saw the Sharon connection coming. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I don't think I saw that one. <laughs> that one either. Uh, I think I, I still wanted to believe that Taim was Demand Dread, uh, and uh, so yeah, I didn't really kind of pay much attention to it after that. Well, hey, uh, Mike, thanks for waiting online and uh, waiting for the call, and I appreciate your comment. Have a good evening, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good one to know. I mean, a lot of fans probably do have that question that are new readers, which yeah. was you know, mm -hmm. were, could they have ever been different people? Which I think mm -hmm. it's a hundred percent they were um, yeah. at the time. So yeah. Let's uh let's bring Trevor into the call. Hey Trevor, welcome to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing tonight? How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Um, great. Awesome. So yeah, I'm coming from a, like a new reader sort of perspective. I read all the books after the series was completed. So A, there wasn't much like downtime, and B, I didn't really like dive into any theories or anything. Um, and from my perspective, like I didn't know there was this whole time equals steam and dread thing till after yeah. um but and it kind of was a weird journey because in the book even if there's not really like a blatant connection you can tell something is up with taim um yeah. just because yeah. every nobody likes this guy um loose theron is like it's the only person loose theron is like on the spot like kill this dude um yeah. 
And then it turns out that he's just kind of like a dark friend. Like, and it, it just kind of makes Rand look kind of even stupider, honestly. Because <laughs> it's so obvious that this guy yeah. is evil. Um, so the fact that, you know, nothing more really came of it was, you know, in retrospect, when I read the theory, I was like, oh, well, this would have been awesome and perfect. But um, knowing that it was sort of cut from his ideas oh, makes a little more sense. Right. Yeah, well, well, this... Uh... <laughs> That's a that's an interesting point, which I think Therese brought this up to me today, is just how many quotes there are about Luz Theron kind of speaking, just like being upset, or I shouldn't like, call them two different people. Whenever but... time is around, he's like, I got to kill Demon Dread. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It was so on the nose. You know, when you just yeah. think about it, there were just so many quotes, and we just didn't bring them all to... We, we did there enough was. quotes today. There was just so and, many, right? And, you know, and, it starts with Demon Dread... His scene is the first scene in the book, in the prologue, when he's at uh, Shia Ghul. And his scene is the last scene in the book, in the epilogue, when he's like, you know, he goes back to Shia Ghul and he's like, have I not done well? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's that's a, the whole book. The book ends, you know, yeah. and it's like the whole book is about time and dread. Yeah, it is. That it's Yeah, I agree. Lord of Chaos is the time and dread um, book itself. And and uh, so it is weird. I think you're right, Trevor. Uh, Trevor, I, that would have to change definitely mm-hmm. in the Amazon series. If they left them separately, that's one yeah. thing I would like to see change, which is not having Luz there and freak out every time he's around. Um, mm-hmm. And that, it always seemed like it was so on the nose anyway. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, that one was, maybe it was the Mask of Mirrors or the, the illusion aspect of it where somehow mm-hmm. Rand was inherently aware that something was wrong there. I don't know. But mm-hmm. hey, Trevor, I thank mean, you luckily much. you oh, yeah. can kind of, you can kind of play it off like it's just normal kind of madness, which I always, thought was a possibility too which i think was rand was thinking if i'm not mistaken hmm. yeah no you could i mean that's what you, you eventually kind of were like that's too it almost was too obvious right You're like that's too obvious right. it can't be true or something. and that's that's kind of why he didn't see you know the obvious with taim uh because he was so paranoid about his paranoia you know uh because in his sure, mind sure. the paranoia was something that came from the madness you know so he was trying to tamp down his paranoia and whenever he's seeing the obvious in front of his face about Taim, he just writes it off as paranoia. So. That's true. True yeah. that. True that. Anyway, one, thanks guys. One thing that, uh, one thing that hasn't been mentioned, Matt, yeah, go is, for it. Yeah. Um, well, towards the end, uh, a, a crown of, when, once Cat Swain turns up, she, um, which is, this is why I think that, he'd made the change sort of after that because she not only had met Loghain, but she'd also helped in the capture of Taim. Mm. And, but th- she never got to see Taim um, most tellingly because she would have known straight away that he was a different guy. And she yeah. also mm. has, of course, the Terangriol, which actually warn her of exactly that um, if there was any disguise. So by the time that she was flitting around, he must've changed direction on that because otherwise her whole arc is another one that wouldn't make sense either. Yeah. It's interesting how much of that he wanted to give to her. And so he just changed his mind there. Hey, Trevor, thank you so much for calling in. You got it. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. You too. So, uh, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I said good night. Oh, no, good night to Trevor. Uh, uh, what, what were you saying, Linda? I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Um, is that they, I think that Cad Swain w- may have been one of the ones that would be in, intended to actually um, expose De- Demon Dread if he'd remained as Taim because, yeah. you know, but they, that was never touched on. It, it yeah, interesting. Yeah, there's there's so many intricacies just, when he changed the plots after he wrote things. Yeah, that's and right. And then what, what you end up seeing in the books often is well far afield from what you see in the notes previous oh, yeah. to him writing a book. Yes. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Our last caller is uh, Felix. Let's bring Felix into the call. Hey, Felix, welcome hey, to the Dusty Wheel. How are you doing? Oh, hey, you doing great. Thanks for putting me in tonight. Absolutely. So what's your question? So uh, I wanted to go back for a second to, uh, to Demon Dread as Sharon Prophecy or False Dragon or what have you. And I especially wanted to direct this at Linda with the 13th Depository. Oh, okay. We get okay. these tastiest little bits of dark prophecies in the book, but we don't really get yeah. to dive into it. I'm curious if any notes or research have come up connecting uh, uh, the Sharon, Demon Dread, or any other ma- maybe major last battle points uh, that were in the notes and confirmed. Okay, so um, Demon 
it's not in the notes. It's really just in the books and also in River of Souls. Demon Dread was um, to be the, he was called Dragon Slayer. That's what they actually called him. Uh, and um, he thought, yay, that means I'm going to kill Rand. Um, but actually, he, the Jumara, the creatures that um, are in the Blight, but also there was one trapped in, in Shara that Demon Dread in, uh, in Brandon's um, short story called River of Souls. Uh, Demon Dread killed this Jumara with some effort. He, it nearly killed him. That was, he called, those were also called worms. And a worm huh. or a worm is another name for a dragon. So the fact mm. that um, that was the actual dragon that Demon Dread killed. Yeah. So he was a dragon slayer. Uh, it just wasn't the dragon that he thought it was. <laughs> yeah, not the no, dragon you wanted. No, yeah, no, exactly. definitely not. Because, you know, all through <laughs> the books, there's that whole thing about believing what you want to believe and the power of that belief. Um in in a whole heap of different ways and yeah that 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 demon dread was completely led astray by that oh that's a really cool tidbit thank you and that's also in my demon dread essay but yeah um i'll send a link to that yeah please do yeah that'd be good good. and felix before i let you go would you like to see the amazon show actually merge these characters back together basically have taim be demon dread uh, even if we keep the Sharans, that's fine. But would you like to see them play that out in the show, or would you like he, them to keep it separate? Uh, to me, I can be happy with either one, but don't go as heavy-handed on the hints if you're not going to combine them. I think there's too many yeah. other fun things to spend screen time on. That's that's true. That's true. Don't waste any time if you don't need to. Um, yeah, I like that idea. Hey, Felix, thank you very much for waiting on online for us, and I appreciate the call, and uh, have a good evening, okay? Yeah, you do the same. Thanks. Yep. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank thank you, all of our callers. That was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, great questions about uh, this particular, you know, uh, theory or these theories, I should say. Um, I I wanted to throw this to both of you. Uh, kind of final thoughts about this, or anything you wanted to share with fans that are watching. Uh, Linda, I remember us talking before. Did you have something you wanted to cover before we ended? Um, okay. Yeah, it's just, I guess, the whole story arc thing. So originally it looked like the Demon Dread story arc, he was going to be Mr. Second Best yet again. And this time it would be as Taim doing all the heavy, the hard work with training up the students for Rand and yet not actually getting that credit. And he was also, they were emphasising his gambler aspect where he was willing to sort of, you know, really risk himself uh, to achieve this goal of, and you know the this obsessive killing with ran like sicking the usher man who he was training on to to um to kill rand as as they did um but then we find out later that you know so at that point it was definitely time yeah and I... then later you know that's where the switchover changed and then instead of that um what was developed up was uh demon dread in his hannibal the great general uh, or the Chi- you know the Chinese general from the Warring States period, uh, that became emphasised instead. And then when Brandon started to, he took that and went further into whole, the whole Beowulf type mythology. So yeah. yeah, it changed. We got the the surprise army from nowhere doing the thing that couldn't be done. I, I actually I actually do kind of prefer that we that Brandon took him that route in the sense of oh, yeah. uh, him yeah. just placing himself as Rand's second almost was almost too much of a repeat. It was almost yeah. too expected. It was too on the nose. Yeah. It really wasn't that. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite happy that they went down that route. Um, it was funny because before um, the last book came out, I actually asked Brandon, I was trying to find out if he was going to do a Hannibal specifically. And I asked if, um, a, you know, you could move across from Shara over the top of the, what would have been the Arctic, the poles, down into the mainland. And there was this look of sort of alarm on Brandon's face. And I thought, oh, hello, uh, I'm on the right track here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but it was the wrong direction. But Brandon does. The concept he, was there. What's funny about that is he does, I, I don't know, I can't call it a tell, but he does kind yeah. of sometimes react very visually when you yeah, talk. That's right. That, when it was that was exactly what happened. He, <laughs> I, I could see the reaction. 
So that was when Brandon was in Sydney and I actually met up with him when he was doing a book signing there. And yeah, I just thought I'd casually ask this question because I was thinking about um, Demon Dread being Hannibal. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, that's great. Yeah, I was close, very close. You were very close, yeah. <laughs> Therese, Therese, any final thoughts uh, before we close uh, up for the evening? Nope, let's close up. Okay, I do want to. I do want to pose this uh, before I. I have a final quote for Taylor to put up on the screen for us. But before I do that, I want to mention this: uh, that Teresa and Linda, I'd really like to do an episode that talks about Louis Theron. I feel like this is one of the things that's easy for people who are not steeped in the books to mess up, <laughs> as far as. What is Luce Theron? Who is Luce oh, Theron okay. as far as his connection to Rand? This is an argument that we had. You know, I don't know how many theories uh, went on yeah. about Luce Theron and, and what is Luce Theron. Uh, I, so I think it would be spent, fun to do a, an episode like that. I spent more time studying that subject than any other subject. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I, I want so. us to come on here and I want to pick your brain up because I, I think that's even misunderstood with fans. Uh, fans talk about how the show should do this and they often talk about how they should impersonate this person and have a separate person kind of walking around visually because that way people can see who he's talking to. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of want to get, uh, I think doing an episode like that would be a lot of fun. So that may not be an RJ Notes panel, but I think we should do one here this year sometime and talk about Lewis Theron, if that's cool with you. So absolutely. Uh, let me throw this last quote up. I think this is a perfect quote to end on. Uh, because I think this epitomizes everything that we feel about Robert Jordan, at least I do. So let me, let me read you this quote. He, he wrote this to Tom McCormick in 1993. He said, as far as any message to the folks on the net, it is really quite an honor to find out that so many of you want to discuss my books in such detail. Frankly, I'm both pleased and amazed that you have put so much time and effort into it. Well, I hoped I was writing something that would hold people's interest. It seems maybe I have. One thing, don't think you've reached bottom in your digging. I tried to make the books fairly simple on the surface and quite complex underneath. You've dug up a number of points that I thought I had buried well enough that they wouldn't come to light for some time yet. Don't expect me to say which ones. And you've also dug up one or two that I would, I'd never buried in the first place. No, no hints there either. Jordan's Law, I think can be better stated along these lines. Ah, you think you know how the game goes now? Very good, gentlemen. What say we increase the bets just to make it interesting? Uh, I think that that's a great way to talk about this or end this topic. Thank you both for coming on and talking about Taim Asmodian and Demondrad all about the notes. And to Robert Jordan, thank you very much for playing the game with us. Uh, Dice Daimar, uh, being the kind of author that just loved to interact with his fans, loved to tease us mercilessly, and did create a world that we just endlessly continue to find ways to talk about. So uh, thank you all, everyone that's in chat. Uh, if you want to kind of continue these conversations, have other questions, you can jump into Discord. You can find those links in the description. Like I said, if you want to go look up the library, the special collection over at the, what is it, the College of Charleston Addlestone Library special collection. Uh, if you want to go look at that, that link's also in the description. And we'll get a couple more links from Therese and Linda after the show and we'll put them in the description also to the topics we talked about tonight. So, uh, I guess as we say from the Dusty Wheel, good night and smash to black. If you want news and rumors that appeal, welcome to the Dusty Wheel.